Hello, my name is Jorb. I love gear. Let me set the scene for you. We're talking about Eurorack, okay? And in Eurorack, where individual modules are expensive, space is a supremely limited resource, and swapping out one module for another can break your creative flow, the idea of devoting some space in your rack, in your Eurorack case, uh, to a flexible multi-purpose utility module is a really appealing option. And when someone asks for, oh, I have this much space left, I need a flexible utility, if it's more than 20 HP, there's one thing that's recommended more than anything else, and that is the make noise maths. Maths is two function generators tied to four channels of attenuverting or mixing with tons of ways to control or, or process that voltage in a lot of interesting, complicated ways. Its first revision came out all the way back in 2009, and at the time, I'm sure it was a godsend. I don't, I don't think many other things in Eurorack looked or worked or behaved that way, but still, 13 years later, it shows up constantly in, in racks, in people's recommendations, in hypothetical setups, things people put together on modular grid. It's almost a meme that everybody needs to have maths. Eurorack is still obsessed with it. Eurorack is obsessed with the make noise maths, but should it be? How many times have you seen somebody make a post or, or make a comment about not getting along with maths or beginners who were told to buy it, but just can't quite figure out how to work with it? Yes, I think maths is an amazing set of building blocks for processing signals, for manipulating voltage, for generating voltage, but it's not that inviting. All of its controls are really at a low level. And admittedly, that is part of why it's so flexible, but it's also why it is intimidating, why it is a little less inviting than some other options. But here now, in 2022, let me introduce you to the subject of this video and what I see as the new king of voltage processing flexibility with the Create Audio Function Junction. This is another module born out of the collaboration between Create Audio and Pittsburgh Modular. It is an all-in-one utility. It is three function generators. One is an ADSR that can loop. One is just called the function generator. It can be a two-stage envelope, uh, AR or ASR. It can be a slew limiter that can also loop. Its rates can be voltage controlled. Plus, there's a dedicated LFO. Plus, there's a three-channel attenuverting mixer that can also be used as three separate attenuverted channels. It does a ton, and it's all presented in a way that feels clever and that feels intuitive. Compared to maths, I might hear the argument of less flexibility Maybe. But in many use cases, I think having the controls labeled and grouped the way they are here, that is to say, like sections of control you would have on a proper fixed architecture synthesizer, uh, it makes more sense to me than math's open-ended processing approach. And I think it'll make more sense to a lot of people. So, And that's what I'm going to try and show you today. I'm going to talk about the function junction, what it is, what it does, why I think it's a good general utility. Great. If you're a subscriber or a patron, thank you very much for letting me do what I do. If you aren't either uh, and you like what I do, I encourage you to support me in whatever way fits for you. That could be a comment, a like, you could check out the merch. Uh, or even the Patreon. Cool, cool. I'm still kind of unsure about what your rec coverage looks like for me, for Jorb. Uh, I don't feel like I've nailed it in the past, and I'm going to really try and make it work for me and feel good to make and feel good to watch. So there you go. Any extra feedback? Certainly appreciated today. Okay, you guys want to focus on the module? Let's focus on the module. Okay, here we are at the case. First, just in case I wasn't clear, I don't think maths is bad. I think it's incredible. I just think it's a little less universally applicable. Okay, and past this intro, I'm going to focus on what the function junction does and not what maths doesn't. I don't want to flame more in the comments at all, okay? This is a super simple setup. It's an IntelliJ Dixie 2 Plus, a DSM-01 Curtis filter that also has a VCA in it, and of course, function junction. The O tool is just for visualization. Uh, and what I'm going to do is make a simple synth voice, just a single oscillator and single filter, of course, and then tweak the patch as I go to try and show you all the features of all of our sections. This is also the first canonical appearance of the Nifty Keys, which Create Audio sent over all the way back when they sent me the East Beast. <laughs> so this and the Function Junction, they both sent over and they've been sitting for a while. Happy to show them off now. The Nifty Keys will be featured in more videos later, I promise. But for now, I have CV out of the Nifty Keys in the Volt 4 octave of the Dixie. And then I'm going to take the Sawtooth out. And first, first, let's just hear our oscillator through our filter. So I'm going into the first channel of the O-Tool. <laughs> Wow. 
wonderful. And if you hear a reverb and a delay, that is the Empress reverb just barely off screen here. So that's what the sound we're working with. And immediately I want to patch in a little bit of movement. And that is where we start with the function junction. I'm going to take the gate out of the nifty keys. And that is going to go into this A in. And that is for ADSR. So the way the function junction is laid out, these, of course, are your controls for the ADSR section. And all of the jacks associated with it are these three up here. And they say A, A, and A. They are A in, A loop, and A out. And same thing for the other two. So the function generator is these four controls. The LFO is these two outputs. And the mixer, these three uh, potentiometers, relate to these seven jacks. Let me zero these out so I don't forget it later. Okay? But we're just going to worry about the first ADSR for now. So I'm triggering a gate in. Then I need to take the output of that and send it to, let's start with the VCA, which is the VCA CV here. Try and keep these cables out of your way here. And now let's just do sustain all the way up. So you see every time I hit a key, we get some activity on that light on the ADSR. That's how we know it's doing what it's supposed to. Let me find one of my very tiny green jacks and move that all the way into the O-Tool. Filters open. That's good. We, of course, can add some shape to that. And there is our ADSR. You can hear it's really long. If I just set up nothing but full sustain and then release, actually, let me dime it now, it will last for a really, really, really long time. I don't think I even want to let it go over its full course here. But no worries about it being too fast, that is for sure. So what if I, a little more conservative, on all of our controls here. Simple, perfect, sounds good. Now, what if I also want my filter to move every time I press uh, a key, every time I press a gate? I could do a few things. I'm going to start by using the same ADSR to control it, okay? And I could multiply this output, or, so helpfully, on the function junction, I can have an attenuated output of the ADSR by using the mixer section, and it's even normaled. So if I check my camera here to make sure you can see what I want you to see, so that, so that one means it's channel one of the mixer, that black line around the jack means it's an input, and the red circle with an A means we're normaled to the ADSR. And so if I take one out of the mixer, and I had send that into, I'm going to use a different colored cable, actually. So if I take one out of the mixer, the attenuated mixer, and I send that into the CV of our filter. I'm going to turn the filter up and now down and increase this channel of the mixer. Then we have filter movement of as it relates to the ADSR, and it's attenuated, so I can put it down to zero, which is in the center, because to the right would be positive, to the left would be negative. I can add more. And so not only does that let me use the ADSR through two different outputs at the same time, we also have one that's attenuated, which is useful for the Curtis filter here, because it doesn't have any attenuated inputs of its own. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, one of the first things I would like to do is have a separation between the envelope on my VCA and on my filter, right? So I'm going to send the second function generator here, the function generator, <laughs> out to my VCA. So I'm going to use this same cable. I'm just going to send to the F out, okay? Nothing yet because we're not triggering it with a gate. So I'm going to grab another cable. Here's the F in. I'm going to send that to gate 2. Right now it's doing the same thing as gate 1. 
and I'm making sure that I route my cables in a way that you can still see all the labels. And now whenever I press a key, you can see that we're getting this red light. Okay, right now it's just an attack and decay envelope. And it can get really, really short. And this curve, make it go from, this would be exponential to linear to logarithmic. It also has an effect on its length. That's a lot of textural diversity. But if I wanted to act more like an ADSR, I can add a sustain stage. And now as long as I hold a key, it sustains. And the decay stage is a release stage. And this, to me, is really all I've ever really needed in a mono voice. I learned that with using the ARP Odyssey. The ARP Odyssey has two envelope generators like that. And I like to use ADSR for the filter, so you can have a sustain level, which is important, and snappy decay that's separate from your sustain level, so you hear the filter movement because the VCA can stay open. So already I have two envelopes like I would expect on a lot of fully featured mono synths. Anyway, before I get too far ahead of myself, if I take the gate out of the ADSR and I put this into loop mode, it works like an LFO. And you shape it with the same controls. Useful. Nice to have. I would probably loop with either the LFO, of course, or the function generator over it. So I'm going to put it back to where it was. And start triggering it again. Just didn't want to forget it. And there's a long switch that makes it take way, way longer. But you understand what that is. I don't have to demonstrate that. Great, I know that was a little bit out of order, and I apologize. <laughs> and now I'm going to do something else that seems a little weird. I'm going to go back to just ADSR controlling our VCA and our VCF. Because I'm going to use our function generator for something else. And I'm going to use it as an LFO. And here I'm going to turn off sustain, turn on looping. And now if we look at the light, it reflects what's going to be. And I want to use that to also control the filter. Lucky for me, I don't need to do anything other than move our filter CV to the mixed output of this mixer. I'm going to pull this back so you can see everything still. Because the second channel of the mixer is normaled to uh, the function generator. So if I hold a key and I increase the contribution of the second channel here, you can hear this looping function generator affecting our Curtis filter. We can change its shape. Love that. And I love that the light gives you feedback. Great. And that's not all we can get out of it. I'm going to use the aftertouch channel of the Nifty Keys. Can you see that on either of these cameras? Sure hope you can. And I'm going to run that into the mod in of the function generator, which is right there. Turn up what the mod does, and then with this mod button, we can select which parameters it changes. So as I push it on aftertouch, it'll just make the attack longer. It'll just make the decay longer, or it'll make them both longer. Or if I set it to the negative side of this attenuverter, the mod attenuverter. It'll make it even faster. Actually, I'm going to change this to the mod wheel. I know you can see that. So now we have a voltage controlled LFO with actually really sophisticated shapes. So if I set it to linear, no attack, just decay, 
That's a Sawtooth. Or if I swap that, all attack, no decay, it's a ramp. Really, really flexible. Or any lopsided saws or triangles I can think of in between. <laughs> Great, really, really love that. If I put on sustain, it'll only be an LFO once I let go. Man. <laughs> That's sort of a sophisticated patching arrangement already. And it's just using two of these function generators, plus the mixer. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I really do love that. Okay, great. I'm going to take our second gate out even and, and make sure we're back to where we thought we were. We have just the one ADSR controlling our VCA and our filter. And while we're here... The LFO, which is on channel 3 of our mixer by default, if I turn up this channel of the mixer, by default it's the triangle. That, because going into this mix channel, is coming to a filter cutoff, just like all the other things are. And we can, of course, use both at the same time. Or excuse me, both LFOs at a time, function generator and the LFO. Anyway, I'm getting a little lost in the sauce. <laughs> let's talk about the LFO on its own. So I'm going to take its output here of the triangle and run that into, let's do pulse width of the Dixie. And then I will then, of course, take the pulse width out of the Dixie. And lucky for us, we have an attenuated input for that here on the Dixie. I'm going to turn off the LFO contribution to the filter. Increase it to the filter a little bit. Go all the way back around. Okay, so our LFO is on our pulse width right now. And what if I also want, let's say, the mod wheel to control the filter cutoff? I can run that into a free channel of the mixer. Why don't I use channel 2? Bring these things down a little bit. What if I want my LFO to be variable? Well, what if I use the function generator instead and I send my aftertouch out to the mod input of the function generator? And I loop it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, what if I want to take... Awesome. And I know this is super unorganized. I'm just trying this, okay? And if you don't like it, you don't like it. Tell me you don't like it. <laughs> I'm changing now the filter CV to just be the first channel of the mixer. Okay? And I'm going to use the second two channels of the mixer to mix audio. So I'm going to take the pulse width out, like we've been hearing. And I'm going to take the... Let's also do the sub oscillator. That'll be in channel three. And now I need to take the audio input of the DSM-01 out from the mix here, and I put these both about at zero. Can't hear much. Open the filter some more. So right now, channel two of the mixer is the pulse width. Channel three is the sub.
So just to be clear again what's happening right now, I'm using the mixer as one single attenuverter, which is the filter envelope, the ADSR contribution to the filter cutoff. And then the other two channels as an audio mixer for for what is right now the pulse width and the sub oscillator. Just the sub. Just the pulse width. And both. One last thing, this function generator can be a slew limiter. So I'm gonna do that with the what I think is the easiest to hear. I'm going to use CV. So I'm gonna take the pitch out of my keyboard, run that into the input of the function generator, run the output of the function generator into the volt per octave in. Tech, decay, sustain. Okay, so now with attack and decay at zero. But if I just turn up the attack, I think, if I leave it on sustain. And the decay. It's like glide. Very, very cool. I'm going to unplug it from that configuration and let's use it to self-patch a little bit. How about we take the, let's do the square out of the LFO and send the square out of the LFO to the input of the function generator. And now with the light, we can see what it's doing. Wonderful, and I wanna send the output of that function generator somewhere. So why don't I send that to, let's do, uh, pitch modulation of the Dixie here. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, let's do that. So if I leave sustain on, it's just the square wave being passed through. But if I add attack, can hear it slewed on the rising edge, or the rate of change is limited on the rising edge. If I add decay, you can hear that rate of change is limited on the falling edge. You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to plug that into my, and I should have been doing this whole time, I'm going to plug that into the second channel here of my O tool, so we can watch it. Oh yeah, now we're talking. A pro would have done this from the start. You want to read the cables? FM1. Okay, so if I turn off that decay. We do longer time scale here. Perfect. Here's our visual. So right now, I have the square wave of the LFO going into the function generator, the input of it. And we're using it as a slew limiter, right? And we're using it as a slew limiter. So we see channel two is the output of the function generator. And we have it affecting the pitch of the oscillator. And if I add attack... You can see that rate of change on the leading edge is reduced. And we can change the curve of it. Oh, this is such a great visual. And if I turn up the decay, the rate of change on the falling edge is limited as well. I know it's annoying to hear pitch like that. But just to understand, like maths, you can use this function generator channel as a slew limiter. 
I think that's all I'm going to show you on this, in part because this is, again, me saying, hey, what does your rack coverage look like for me? Tell me what you do and don't like. Uh, this is about as much as I plan for any video. I think for your rack that makes it suffer a little bit more. <laughs> I think that your rack needs a little more structure. You tell me if that does or doesn't work, especially for something like this, which feels so utilitarian. Understanding it in a structured way matters. If there are any downsides, I think it's really ugly. <laughs> Uh, and I know it's supposed to be playful or approachable, and I, and I get that, but it reminds me of the credit sequence from Napoleon Dynamite, uh, and not like, you know, the really flexible, functional utility that it is. So I, I wish I had a different panel. I also think in some people's setups, it would be great if it was reversed. All the jacks were on the bottom and the knobs were on top. Especially you see that paired with my Dixie here. But I think in any Eurorack case that has... 6U, this is perfect, and, and having all your controls there so your jacks can run out to the rest of the system makes perfect, perfect sense. But that's the only, and I really sincerely mean that, downside is the way it looks. I think everything else is superb. I, I think the range of the controls is flexible. If anything, the difference between the short and long ADSRs could be more. But the amount of functionality you can get from this panel is almost outrageous. <laughs> In particular, I want to call it the mixer for its flexibility. But really, I think this is perfect for an all-in-one utility. I think this is perfect if you aren't sure what utilities you want and you know at some point you're going to do a subtractive synth voice because you are. <laughs> it's modular. I think this is so much better to choose than the maths and so much more approachable. And I think for myself, certainly the outcomes I want of a function generator are more accessible here than maths. They're more available here, and the way I get to them is a lot more obvious. So that's really it. I think the function junction is great. Create audio in Pittsburgh. You have done an excellent job. Again, I'm happy to have this. It makes me want to make a really tiny Eurorack case, but that's it. My name's Jorb. I love gear. Thanks for watching. Cheers and so long. <laughs>